for me, Hoya have a very special place in my heart because they were my wedding favor. So the Hoya carii, otherwise known as the sweetheart plant, is a heart-shaped Hoya. You can buy it either. It's a vining plant, but a lot of people buy what are called blind cuttings, which is just one heart planted in a pot. It won't grow beyond that, but the heart will stay alive for a long time. So at my wedding, the tablescape, everybody had a heart-shaped Hoya at their tables. And then the heart-shaped Hoya was what they took home with us. And we said, take a piece of our hearts home with you after our wedding. So Hoyas have a very special place in my heart for multiple reasons. And I'm so excited to dedicate a video to talking about them with you today. Plant friends, I'm excited about this video because Hoya, such a diverse genus of plants, such an incredible array of foliage. And they're actually very simple to care for when you know one thing about them. And so I'm so thankful to Proven Winners Leaf Joy for partnering with me on this video to tell you the one solution, but also several other solutions to set all of your Hoyas up for success. So welcome. So in my opinion, Hoyas really had a moment in 2022, like 2021, 2022, Hoyas really, to me, like, blew up on, you know, YouTube and social media. I think they blew up for a variety of reasons. You've probably seen the really famous time lapses of the blooms opening. So when Hoyas do bloom, which by the way, it's hard to get them to bloom, but we'll talk about it in a minute, how to get them to bloom. They have these umbilate flower structures that have tons of tiny little star-shaped flowers. And there's a lot of time lapses on the internet that have gone viral about the flowers like bursting open. That's really beautiful. They have such incredible foliage, variegation, color, colors, pinks, whites, greens, and you can trellis them, which is really fun. So there's so many different reasons to love Hoya. It makes total sense that they like kind of had a meteoric rise in the last couple of years. So first off, Hoyas are often nicknamed the wax plant, and that's because of their flowers. So they have these gorgeous flowers that come off of a peduncle. They have an umbilate shape. So it's many little stems that have many little star-shaped flowers on them. And the flowers are so beautiful. It's often said that they're cut from wax. Like they look like they look fake. They look like they're wax, wax shaped flowers. So that's why the Hoya is nicknamed the wax plant. This is a species that grows their climbers, right? So you'll see these Hoyas will vine, they will climb, they're epiphytic, they will climb up a tree. My family lives in Florida and I see them often used as um, trailing. They look gorgeous in trailing planters as well. If you have like an outdoor planter with a thriller, a filler and a spiller, Hoyas make great spiller plants. And I see them often in Florida in like outdoor kind of arrangements of potted flowers. They have such wild variegation. It is so incredible. And if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I love pink plants and there are a lot of pink varieties. And also with a lot of Hoyas, their new growth comes in pink and then turns the color that it's supposed to be. And I love any opportunity to throw a splash of pink in my collection. So Hoyas are a great fit. Hoyas are also a great fit because they're actually pretty easy to care for when you get one thing right. And that's light. Hoyas love light. Let me say it again. A louder for the people in the back. Hoyas love light. If you have light, your Hoyas will be happy. If you don't have light, your Hoyas will not be happy and you will need to add a grow light. So I don't want to call them like a low maintenance house plant because they're not the kind of plant that if you have a low light home, you can just bring them home and they're going to thrive. But they're low maintenance that if you put them in the light that they need, you do not need to remember to water them. You do not need to amplify your humidity. You don't need to do much for these guys to thrive and grow incredibly bush bushy, gorgeous foliage. And with enough light, they might even bloom for you. So as we go through Hoyas today, let's talk about blooms. I want your Hoyas to bloom for you. I want you to have that experience. I have cared for Hoyas for many years. <laughs> I have friends who have cared for Hoyas for many years and have them under grow lights. They're hard to get to bloom indoors. They need a significant amount of light to bloom indoors. I believe in you. If it's if the blooms are what you want, you can make it happen. You have to supplement with light and make sure that you're fertilizing. But I wouldn't say buy Hoyas for the blooms. If you want plants that bloom indoors, I would say anthuriums first. Go watch the anthurium video. That flamingo plant is going to bloom for you a lot faster and a lot easier than the Hoyas. And it's going to be a lot showier. So I want to talk about Hoyas and their foliage and their climbing patterns. We're actually going to trellis a Hoya at the end of this so you know how to put your Hoyas on a trellis to get beautiful structures and shapes with the flowers. One thing for the blooms, which I do feel like I have to say, is a lot of the blooms are scented. 
And so I am going to this year try and get some of my Hoyas to bloom because I love a scented bloom. I grow the coconut orchid. I love a scent. I love trying to engage all five scents with my plant collection. So I do love that. You can give a quick Google to the top scented plants, or maybe we can put a list up as B-roll. But I do think that's pretty cool. So let's talk about light because light is going to be the most important thing when carry for Horia. Have bright light. Put them in a southern facing window. Put them in uh, maybe a western facing window, or more importantly, put them under a grow light. And make sure that grow light sits on a timer and is on for like 12 hours a day. When it comes to watering, Hoya are really tolerant of underwatering. So if you're a low maintenance plant parent, Hoyas are a great option for you. I have embarrassingly underwatered my Hoyas before. You'll notice their leaves are very succulent, so they can store a lot of water in their leaves. That's what makes them drought tolerant, but not necessarily frequently because Hoyas can really stand to let the top of their soil dry out. Hoya do not like sitting in water. They're epiphytic plants. Their roots are used to being exposed to air as they climb up trees. So don't let them sit in water, okay? Don't let them sit in water. Hoyas don't like wet feet. Because of that as well, you're going to want to make sure that you use a nice, chunky, aerated soil when planting your Hoyas up. So with humidity, I have never altered the humidity for my Hoyas, and they're really happy. If you want to try and encourage blooming, if you want to try and encourage faster growth, you can put them in a higher humidity environment. Hoya grow in the jungle, right? Hoya grow naturally in humid environments. So they're going to appreciate humidity, but they don't need it like some other genus that we've talked about on this Growing Joy with Leaf Joy series need. So I like that, you know, it's not a dire situation. You don't have to like flood your room with humidifiers in order for your Hoya to thrive. I have my Hoya in rooms with no humidifiers and they're doing just great. The other thing with Hoyas that I've noticed and what I've read that will also help encourage them to bloom is they like to be on the tighter, more root bound side. So don't repot your Hoyas and up pot them a lot. They don't want to sit in extra soil. I think they like their roots to be like nice and cozy. So if you've had your Hoya in a pot for a couple of years and you want to refresh the soil, this is where you're going to repot, take the Hoya out, shake the soil off, give it fresh soil, put it back in instead of potting it up, which is when you would put it in a larger container. There will be a time when you have roots cramming out the bottom of your pot and it's time to pot up your Hoya. But as a genus, they do like to stay a little bit more cramped and they prefer to be a little bit more on the root bound side than on the like expansive, you know, very comfortable too much soil side, if that makes sense. Okay, let's talk about flowers. So if you want your Hoyas to flower, you do need to give them a lot of light. The other thing, oh my God, I'm so mortified I did this the first Hoya I got. I had a friend send me some Hoya cuttings. The Hoya cuttings had peduncles on them. Peduncles are the the spikes that shoot off of the Hoya that the flowers will bloom on. I was pruning the plant back and I pruned off the peduncle. (sighs) I did this like four years ago and I still cringe when I think about it, plant friends, because what I didn't know, what I did in that moment is... When Hoyas bloom, they rebloom on the same peduncle. So when you cut that peduncle off, you're cutting off the ability for more blooms to come in. Now, as the plant continues to grow, it will grow new peduncles. But I just, ugh, I just removed the opportunity for that plant to bloom so much faster. Now I'm waiting for it to grow more foliage and more peduncles. So don't cut the peduncles off. After the Hoya is done blooming, let the blooms fall off and then just leave the naked spike, okay? Don't be like me. Some Hoyas have day length sensitivities. You're going to have to Google whatever specific Hoya you have, but some Hoyas are only going to bloom with the certain length of the day. So like if you have grow lights, you're going to have to have the lights on a certain amount of time and the dark for a certain amount of time. And that ratio will trigger the plant to bloom. So that will, you'll need to do a quick Google. I'm not going to go into every different species, but some Hoyas do have a day length sensitivity that you need to be mindful of. So if it's not blooming, that might be one of the things that you should try. Okay, so I want to walk you through all of the different types of Hoyas that we have here. And obviously, we're going to start with the pink Hoyas. These are great examples of pink variegation and the difference of variegation. So this is a Hoya green light. These are both cultivars of, I believe, Hoya carnosa. This is green light. This is Hoya flamingo dream. So cute. These plants remind me of the Hoya um, carnosa crimson queen and the Hoya carnosa princess. Something that's interesting, I had a friend ask me, what's the difference between these two variegations? They look the same to me. Well, this has variegation. The Hoya green light has the variegation on the inside. The outer sides of the leaves are green and the variegation is on the inside. 
This one, the Flamingo Dream, has the variegation on the outside and the green on the inside. And it reminds me of how I remember the difference between Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen and Crimson Princess. The queen is the queen. She wears the crown. So her variegation is the crown on the outside. The princess has the variegation on the inside. I just think that's really cute. Then we have this one. These are so cool. Hoya Latifolia Pot of Gold. The variegation on this is so cool. The Latifolia leaves have a lot of really interesting inner veining that is really beautiful. And these leaves will get so big if you give them a lot of light. This is a Hoya. This is the Hoya Black Cat. So moody. If you are a goth gardener, this would be a great situation for you. Also, this is great. So this Hoya is already trellised, but Hoyas love being trellised because in in nature, they climb trees. They like to twine, right? So they put off these large stems and then they the leaves fill in at the nodes. So if you have a trellis, like this is a beautiful trellis that I have. They come in all different shapes and sizes and materials. I love the aesthetic of this being metal. If I don't want like the stick in my Hoya plants, what I could do is easily just wrap the vining on the trellis. Look how easy that is. And then the vines will continue trellising themselves and it will be so beautiful. And all of a sudden I've turned this like really simple pot of Hoya into an aesthetic dream. I mean, look at that. That took like 30 seconds. So gorgeous. Now we get into some of the like splash variegated varieties. This is Hoya corticii. I have to say this is a very hardy Hoya. It looks like it's going to be kind of diminutive and, um, sensitive, but the leaves are very succulent. A lot of Hoyas are kind of like succulents. Their, their leaves hold a lot of water, which makes them drought tolerant. So this is so cute for a little pot to be spilling over. Like I said, they do great on trellises, but they also make great trailing plants. I have a pot of this in a cute little pot and it's trailing even over my bookshelf. It's really beautiful. This is Hoya gracilis gorgeous variegation inside the leaves. I mean, you could get lost looking at that variegation. This is a great plant to have near your office, near your workstation. So you can take a little break, take an eye break from your screen, look at the beautiful leaf, and then look back to your screen. This is the simplest of all the Hoyas. This is the Hoya Choka. Um, it has very beautiful white flowers. I know that and very simple variegation, but this is another great simple. This is definitely the most interesting of all the Hoyas. Hoya Calistophila Black Cat. Check those leaves out. I mean, what is what do these even look like? Is it like an alligator? I don't, how would you even, I mean, it's called Black Cat. But man, you can tell this is going to really thrive on some sort of trellis. But I can't wait to see what these leaves look like when they come in young too. I wonder if there's interesting variegation when they grow in. And you can see that the plant is already twining with itself. These things want to climb on a trellis so desperately. So give it a trellis. And it's interesting. I mean, this plant is telling me I want a trellis. It's twirling up where this plant is telling me I want to be a hanging planter and the foliage naturally kind of hangs over the pot. So once again, listen to the plants and let them be wacky for you and tell you, tell them what you want, <laughs> tell them what they want. And last but not least, here is Hoya Rangsan. It's beautiful. It has the long veins and variegation on it. So gorgeous. I'm definitely going to pop this up and trellis this one as well. And stay tuned. I'll be tending to these plants. I'm very excited to see how I trellis them. Mm. I'm thinking I'm going to plant a bunch of them together and trellis them together. So follow me on Instagram at Growing Joy with Maria to see just how that works out and how they grow in. I hope this episode was helpful. Try Hoyas. Give them light. Give them a try and let me know in the comments if you have any tips on how to get your Hoyas to bloom, any care tips that I missed, and also any varieties of Hoya that you really like that I didn't mention in this episode. Special thanks to Proven Winners for partnering with me on this video. All of these gorgeous Hoya are by Proven Winners Leaf Joy. Proven Winners Leaf Joy are growing the most incredible varieties of houseplants. They are so high quality. When you're at the garden center, ask for Proven Winners Leaf Joy or look for the tag because you will not be disappointed when you bring the Proven Winners Winners Leaf Joy plants home. I've been so happy growing mine, and I hope this episode helps you keep growing joy.